Okay, we have our door pocket in place and we are now ready to create our actual gate. What I'd like to do is reuse this static mesh that we have uh, here surrounding this tank. This would make a great chain link gate. So I'm going to right click on it and choose Finding Content Browser and that will just sync up the content browser so that we have this gate selected. Now we can just drag and drop this, but if we drag and drop it we're going to get a static mesh. So what I'm going to do instead is right click here on the floor and we're going to choose Add Actor, and instead of Static Mesh, I'm going to choose Add Interp Actor, which is a mesh that is dynamic, a mesh that can move around. So we'll add that, let me close out the content browser, and we'll just slide this up because its pivot is actually in the upper left corner. And we'll just kind of fit it right into that pocket on the left hand side. Also, you'll want to double check and make sure its positioning is okay. In my case, it seems to be fitting nicely into that groove. So this is our mesh, and what we want it to do is slide into this pocket and slide back out again. And to do that, we need to set up an animation system. Now this animation system is going to make use of Kismet, which is Unreal Engine 3's internal visual scripting system, and it's going to make use of Matinee, which is an internal animation system which handles everything from simple moving doors to elevators to full-blown cinematic sequences. Now to fire off both these things, to actually use Kismet, to use Matinee, we need some sort of an actor in our level which knows how close the player is to the door, basically knows that the player is trying to get through the door. And it's a similar setup to what you'll see in the real world. When you go to the supermarket, you get those doors that automatically open as you're walking in. And those are either fired off by a little infrared sensor that knows that somebody's approaching. Sometimes the, the older ones are still fired off by weighted panels in the floor. But it's still the same thing you're hitting some sort of a triggering mechanism which tells the door that it needs to open. And we're going to do the exact same thing here. To start off, we need a trigger. I'm going to right click on the floor and you can add a trigger at any point just by coming under Add Actor and you'll see Trigger listed by default. So we'll go ahead and add that. And I want to center up this trigger so that it's halfway through the gate. That way this trigger could potentially be used for entering the gate as well as coming back through the other side. But what's its radius of effect? How close do we need to be to this trigger for it to detect that the player is you know, trying to open the door? Well, to see that, I'm going to hit the C key. C as in Charlie. And we can see the collision radius of this trigger. And currently, you'll notice that it's actually pretty small. So to fix this, I'm going to press F4 and open up the trigger's properties. We'll expand the trigger category and expand cylinder component. And if we come down to primitive component, there's a few things here. First, we have the scale of the object. We also actually, not under primitive component, let me jump under cylinder component. And we have a collision radius and a collision height. The collision height, I'm not too worried about, though we could increase that if we really wanted to. I'm just going to pick on the radius and we'll set that to 128. And now we have this nice, great big radius. Now, if you really wanted to be kind of double careful to make sure the players inside this we could take the collision height and double that to say 80 and then slide the trigger up so now if a player gets close to this gate you can pretty much guarantee that they're going to be within the radius of this trigger so let's make sure we do that so i'm going to go ahead and close out the properties window now we have our trigger we have our gate which needs to move now we just need to set up a kismet sequence so that the engine itself knows that we're, we want some sort of event to happen when the player touches this trigger. So I'm going to open up Kismet. First off though, I'm going to make sure that the trigger is selected. So click on the trigger, make sure you see it highlighted in green. If you don't do that, you're going to have to come back out here and select it again later. Now to open up the Kismet window, we have two separate ways we can go. One is to click the open Unreal Kismet button in the main toolbar. It's a big green letter K with a little arrow at the end. Or we can go under View and just come down to Unreal Kismet, whichever way satisfies you. Now, Kismet has a very simple user interface. I'm just going to kind of leave things very straightforward. We're just going to kind of create our sequence now without going through all the little buttons and whatnot here on the interface. I'm going to right click here in the middle of the Kismet window and I'm going to choose New Event using Trigger 1. The event that I'm going to choose is a Touch Event. Now as soon as I do this, 
we get a little tiny object that appears here inside the window. I'm going to navigate to zoom us in. Navigation here works just like it does in the orthographic views. We can use left mouse to drag around. We can also use right mouse to drag around. But if we hit left and right together, we can zoom in. What we just got is a single expression node that is, it's kind of like a switch box that's listening for when the player comes into contact with that collision radius. When that happens, we can cause certain actions to take place in response. So let's just go ahead and move forward from here. Let's create a matinee, which is an object that, that allows for animation of some sort. I'm just going to right click next to the trigger one touch and choose new matinee. Now this matinee is kind of a complicated object unto itself. It has an animation system already buried inside of it. All we need to do is associate our gate to this matinee. And that in and of itself has a few interesting steps. What I want you to do is to double click on this matinee node. And this will launch Unreal Matinee's editor. Now this editor might be a little bit intimidating when you first see it, but what this is, is a nonlinear animation system. If you've ever done uh, any kind of editing inside of a computer, say in 3ds Max or Maya, or even various 2D animation packages, then you may have seen a setup very similar to this. Now, to get our gate synced up to Matinee, there's a few things we need to do. First off, I'm going to get this Matinee window kind of out of the way. I'm just going to slide it down off the bottom of our screen. I'm also going to take Kismet, and we can just close that for now. So I'll just go ahead and click the close button. We can always bring it back later. I'm going to select our gate. So make sure it's selected. We're going to come back into Matinee, and now we're going to tell this Matinee, this animation system, that it needs to talk to this gate. To do that, I'm going to right-click here in this dark gray panel on the left-hand side. This is our group track list. I'll right-click and choose Add New Empty Group. Now, it's going to ask for a name. Let's call this Sliding Gate. You can name it anything you want. Click OK. And just with that, just having done that, if we close out Matinee and then reopen Kismet, this time I'm going to click on the Open Unreal Kismet button in the main toolbar, Take a look at what we have. Here's our matinee node. We can select our little, there's kind of a guy connected to it here in the sliding gate, though it's a little hard to see. Let me move this object kind of out of the way. To move an object in matinee, simply click on it to select it. I'm sorry, to move it in kismet, not matinee. Uh, we're going to select the object, hold down the control key, and just drag the little guy down there. So now you can see that we actually got a sliding gate input. And what's connected to it? It says interp actor 2. That is the actor of our gate. He's actually been stored inside of a variable that has been connected to our matinee system. Now, if all of this is really new and a little bit eh, kind of frightening, what I want you to do is just go with it for now. Just complete these steps as I do them. And then, one, it'll start to, you'll start to make more sense of it as you actually complete it. But then, later on, we're going to have more videos specifically over Kismet and matinee just to help you get a little more used to the system. All right, so our gate is now connected to matinee, but nothing has been told to move yet. Basically, we've just told the matinee, hey, you're going to communicate with this gate. But what's it going to tell the gate to do? We need to set that up next. So I'm going to double click on the matinee once again. Now, we need to tell this sliding gate group the kind of information it's going to process. To do that, we have to add a track. I'm going to right click on our sliding gate track. And there's all kinds of different tracks we can add. Among the list, though, you'll see a new movement track. And the name pretty much says it all. You add this track when you want to take the object that's connected to the group and move it around in some way. Now, as soon as we do that, we get a new track that's visible. But you'll also notice, just barely, if you look really close, there's a little tiny orange triangle located here on the left side of our track bar. This track bar tells us the overall timing. This is our timeline. This is where all of our keyframes are going to get stored and where we're going to set up the animation itself. Now, if you're unfamiliar with keyframe animation, hopefully you are, but if you're not, that's cool. Keyframe animation simply means you're going to tell our gate in this case, hey, at this time, I want you to be closed. Then one second later, I want you to be open. You don't have to worry about actually sliding the gate to the left or to the right just by telling the computer that it's going to have one pose at time zero and then a second pose or position maybe a second later. It'll take care of all the in-between animation. Now, 
we can slide this timeline left and right by dragging with the left mouse button. So I'm going to kind of drag things over and notice here we are at time zero. It has already placed a keyframe for us. What I want to do now is create a second keyframe. In order to have animation, you have to have two separate keyframes, one keyframe at the beginning and one keyframe at the end to kind of complete the motion. What I'm going to do is move our timeline, which is this little black line down here along this ruled line. We're going to slide this forward to just one second. And it doesn't have to be precise, just something close to one second. And we need to place our second keyframe. To do this, simply press Enter. Now we have two keyframes, two little orange triangles. Here's one at zero seconds and one at one second. Now all we have to do is say, all right, at zero seconds, I want you to be closed. At one second, I want you to be open. To do this, I'm going to take our little matinee window and kind of slide it out of the way. Now we can still see those orange triangles down near the bottom of the view. I'll go ahead and close Kismet. That can be opened up later. And let's pull the camera back. I also want to point something out. Currently, I have our first keyframe selected. That's the keyframe that was at time zero. If we take a look down here in the lower left-hand corner of our view, you can actually see adjust key zero. That means matinee is waiting for us to move this object around to whatever position we want it to be at key zero. Since we want the gate to start closed, it's already exactly where we want it. So back here in the matinee window, I'm going to click on our second key, which is actually key one. And if we get matinee out of the way once more, take a look down here in the lower left corner of our view. It now says adjust key one. Now we need to slide our gate open. So using the translation widget, I'm just going to slide the gate to the right, say to right about there, and we get a little trajectory path here in our view showing us the motion that's going to take place. Now let me make this a little easier to see. I'm going to tap the C key to hide away our collisions. Now let's come back over to matinee. Among the several buttons of the interface, there are some playback controls. And to show these to you, I'm actually going to slide matinee kind of out of the way, so it's down here toward the bottom. I'm going to click stop, and then click play, and watch what we get. There's the motion that we've set up. The gate just slides open. So let's hit stop, show it one more time. And there we go. We're almost finished here inside of matinee. The only thing we have left, if I bring the window back up, is that currently... Our whole animation is five seconds long. We can see it because this light gray area spans from time zero to time five. However, we're only using one second of animation. To show the whole thing, I'm going to scroll the mouse wheel down, which will zoom us out a little bit, and there's a whole lot of wasted time here. What I'm going to do is shorten our animation down to one second. You see this little tiny red flag here, here at the five second mark? This actually controls the end of our animation. I'm going to click that and drag it to the left until our animation is only one second long. And again, it's one of those things that doesn't have to be dead on precise. Even 1.002 will be enough because a human being generally can't register one thousandth of a second. So there we go. We now have one second of animation. We can hit stop and hit play again. And you see that our gate does indeed open. At this point, you're finished with matinee, so let's go ahead and close it out. Whew. So you made it that far. That's great. Let's come into Kismet one more time. So what do we have here? We have a little trigger that's waiting to listen out for when the player touches our trigger object in the level. And then we have our animation system, which is telling our gate to open. Now all we need to do is link the two together. What I'm going to do is come over to this touched output on our trigger one touch and drag out from it and we get this little wire. It's like a cable that's just gonna send a little pulse across the way over into our matinee. I want you to plug this into the play input. So when the player touches this trigger, it's going to play our matinee system. Now with that, let's close out Kismet and let's just try out our level. I'm gonna right click here on the floor and choose play from here. Now if we walk up to the gate, check this out the gate slides open. Now currently it's going to stay that way. We'll talk about closing the gate a little bit later. But what we're going to do is just take one more moment and glance back over what we did. We added a trigger and to that trigger we created an associated event which is listening out for when the player touches the trigger. When the player touches the trigger we're activating a matinee system which is animating our gate sliding from left to right. That's really all there is to it. So let's go ahead and save our level at this point, and when we come back, we'll take a look at how we can 
go back and close the gate after the player walks into the other room. We'll be right back. 